be the last unit in, for this year. Uh, unit 4 has two uh, topics in it, which is topic 3 and topic 8. So we're going to be doing here a, a relation and a function in, in chapter uh, 3 or topic 3. Topic 3 has six uh, sections in it. So the first one is going to be how we can understand uh, the, uh, and know what a function is. Uh, for example, connecting the representation of functions, how the functions, for example, we could use it in real life. Uh, also, we're going to talk about linear functions and nonlinear functions in uh, 3.3. We will also construct functions to model uh, real uh, linear relationships or so real when you talk about real life, linear relationships are always uh, available in real life. Uh, then we're going to look at the increase and the decrease of the intervals when we do uh, linear um, relationships. And finally, we're going to be sketching and we, we're going we're gonna to describe it by words. Uh, that will be the last section. Uh, but the main thing is knowing the difference between linear and non-linear. So this we're going to be putting time on this one. Um, here is the first section, for example, to just give you an idea of what's going to be for this chapter. For example, you could see that there is a relationship between uh, the price of one ticket. Uh, let's say here's one ticket costs one dollar, while six tickets might cost six dollars, five dollars. So you could see that if you buy in, in more quantities, you probably pay less than per item. So we have a, a relationship between them. Okay. Uh, that's what we're going to be doing here. For example, here an eight pound will will cost you eight dollars and fifty six cents, while nine pound will cost you something different. Uh, in this case, that's what we call a function because uh, it shouldn't be the same, you know, same weight, different prices. So, so the relation between the, the the difference between the relation and the function that everything is a relation, but not everything is a function. Okay, so that's what we're going to be doing in class anyway. So this. We're not going to do it here, so I'll just give you an idea. Showing you here an actual life problem, days and distance, for example. So we went now into physics, into actual real life. There's a word problems here, so we're going to be using it. Uh, we're going to use our knowledge of functions. How do how do they work? The slope of the function, uh, the rate of change of a function. So that will all be involved in it. Nonlinear is going to it's going to look like something with not a straight line. So you can see this line is not straight. That's a not nonlinear cold. Uh, this is not linear definitely. Okay, and this is could be a function or not a function by using special tools. We're gonna I'm gonna show you in class. Um, what else? It continue here comparing the nonlinear with the linear. That's exactly what we read from the title. You could see the slope is involved here when it comes to linear. Okay. And that's what also we call the rate of change. And uh, you can see that this line is not linear, so the, the slope will be a little bit more complicated to find. Uh, there's uh, different ways of doing it, but not not you're not going to learn it this year. Um, so what else here? And then it continues. Now, <clears throat> if we go to the next volume, which is that's what we're going to be doing here. So we're going to be solving, for example, problems involving surface area and, and volume. This chapter has only four sections in it. So this chapter is uh, you're talking about surface area and the three-dimensional figures. So the, the volume is always involved with the with the three <coughs> when you're dealing with the three dimensions. Volume of cylinder, volume of cones, and uh, also the volume sphere. So we're not going to do anything else but those uh, types of volumes. So cylinders, cones, and spheres. So each one of them has a section by itself. Just to give you an idea of how it's going to look like, the, the chapter, the uh, first section will be about the surface area. So let's go here, let's go here, here. So surface area of the three dimensions, of, the, of uh, three dimensional figures. This is good to know, by the way, this is in real life that you, this is going to be a real life problem, by the way. This chapter is going to be mentioning everything about real life. So a cylinder, you could see the cylinder here, okay. And uh, if I want to paint it, I want to I I make it, or I want to be able to, to fit something inside it, I need to know the, the, the volume of it. If I want to paint it, I need to know the surface area. Look at this cone, for example, as an ice cream cone. So you could see that, you know, to make this ice cream cone, you need to know, to be able to find out how to do a surface area of that uh, cone. So you would find out how much uh, ice cream you could put inside it. You're talking about the, the world itself, that's a sphere. 
okay the world service sphere so also this is all done um, separately later on this is done all in one in one uh, section then we're going to do something separate for each one of them uh, when we get to them so now the volume is going to be now we're done with the surface area surface is the surrounding area now we're going to do the volume what's how how much we could fit in for example say you're a manufacturing uh, company and you want to manufacture for example a water tank for fish or whatever now you could look at this one here you could see this is a cylinder this is like a rectangular uh, prism what they call so now which one would fit more so what which one has a more volume uh, by creating it this way or, or doing it this way so uh, that's how we do the volume just to find out how much we could fit inside uh, the shape itself this is a, a, a juice uh, for example container how much does it have inside it as a volume you could see this well I'll show you this uh, we, I'll bring a, an actual can and I'll show you that what's what's going on inside so now look at this one the barrels of oil for example how much barrels of oil that would, would might fit inside the oxygen tanks for example uh, divers they use oxygen tanks so they need to know how much they have oxygen inside the inside the shape of uh, the container that they're they're putting on their backs for example um, continue with this one talking about the volume remember that we mentioned the cones here remember what well, the best best example is actually the the ice cream cone for example uh, how much we could fit ice cream in it uh, we'll find every section has its own uh, unique um, uh, rules and equations that you could you could need to follow the last section in this uh, book is going to be the volume of a sphere so that's the world itself that we are in as a sphere uh, look at this one here for example you can see that's a sphere and you have a you know uh, uh, the gumballs machine that's what they call a gumball machine how much you could fit in it is it more than this cone? For example, you could fit more in here than here. For example, if I have the same, for example, measurement, uh, this is a football, so uh, it has to be have a speci specific uh, uh, measurement, the surface area of it, and uh, the volume uh, of air inside it has to be a specific. Uh, and that's it. That's the whole thing uh, that we're going to be doing for this, two, for this unit four. Okay, and that's it. We're done. See you in school. Bye-bye.